What's Chimin everybody? It's your boy Chimp back bringing guys my team building for the playoffs of the GBA against the Atlanta Hot Luchas. So here we got the Chestnut these knots. This is the first time that I'm bringing Chestnut against him. Spike, Sleet Seed, Drain Punch, Toxic. Toxic is primarily so that I don't get set up on by the Salamence and so that I have a way to hurt the Porygon or the Florgus um, should they come in on me as well as to maybe whittle down a Volcanion Drain Punch is a move of choice. Lead Seed is for a little bit of recovery for the rest of my team and then Spikes is just to put a little bit of pressure on his team. AV Spread is just so that I outspeed Florgus and maybe a slower Scizor. Um, takes, uh, uh, Porygon hits a little bit better here and then I maximize my defenses so that Scizor and Salamence are not as threatening. Then I got Moonblast, Earth Power, Dinosaur, and Protect on my Dian. See Free Rocks. Um, pretty standard set, pretty much the same set that I brought last time. Here, I'm debating whether to put Heal Bell or HP Fire right here so that Scizor cannot really come in on me. But it really doesn't matter since I have this Magneton. Eevee Light with uh, enough speed so that I outspeed Scizor. Um, Adamant, Mega Scizor, and then I put the rest in HP. Stay gets a little bit better. So then I got that boy with Toxic Counter Earthquake Encore. Encore is um, pretty cool because it allows me to Encore the Porygon into a weak attack like Ice Beam or I can Encore it into Recover and repeatedly hit it. I decided not to go with Scald because Scald really doesn't do anything except against the Rhyperior because the damage output of Scald is really not going to matter. And I have Counter for the Scizor anyway and then Earthquake hits the Heliolisk. Um, it Oko's after rocks or spikes and it deals a decent amount of damage to the Volcanion in which case I'm forced to Toxic and I don't really want to Toxic Volcanion if I can deal damage to it but Toxic is also for the Porygon because there's really no way that I beat the Porygon outside of Toxic or just whittle it down and hope it's low enough to where I can knock it out or I can PP stall its recovers which I need to use Encore for anyway. So the main thing is that I should not be able to kill, I should not kill a Pokemon with Diancy um, if it has Trace because then I can't Toxic it or I have to force it to Toxic itself with Diancy's Magic Bounce. Then I have the Shuka Berry, Goldie Rocks, um, Iron Head, Ice Fang, Stealth Rock, Fire Fang, just the elemental attacks. And this EV spread allows me to take um, Salamence's plus one Earthquake twice with the Sugar Berry. And uh, just the Elemental Fangs so that I can hit Salamence and the Scizor a lot harder. Edoko Scizor, Edoko Salamence. So that's really solid that I put Iron Head over Earthquake because Iron Head um, is just stronger than Earthquake in general. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Then I have Grass Not Superpower, Icy Wind, Heat Wave on this Torn. This Torn is a unique spread. EV spread allows me to outspeed Zorark, Superpower hits Zorark, Icy Wind for the Salamence, Heat Wave for the Scizor, and then Grass Not for the Rhyperior. I have the ability to use um, this Magneton um, with EV Light a lot better because I have Chestnut. I have. Um, the, the thing is, the, Ch the Rhyperior is really, really annoying for this team. Um, just because of how strong it is. So I put Chestnut here and it allows me to take on the Rapier a lot better because even if he's running Fire Fang um, or Fire Punch, whatever it gets, it's not going to be able to break through my Chestnut with Leap Seed. I'm not going to activate the Weakness Policy if he does have Weakness Policy because I have Drain Punch. So that's really solid there. And yeah, just this Torn and Diancy combo are just win cons. Steelix can actually be a win con as well. Um, this actually buys his entire team, except I don't outspeed half his team. But he really has no switch ins for this Magneton, which is really solid. I was actually debating putting um, Analytic on here just so that I can take on the Porygon a bit better, but that's fine. I can also beat the Porygon if I like paralyze it and then go to Diancy and Earth Power Moon Blast it down, or Flash Kitten drops. So there's also that that I have to watch out for. Drain Punch also beats the Porygon because it puts pressure on it. Ice Beam doesn't do enough damage. So I can force him to keep recovering even if he gets the Magic Bounce. And yeah, I don't have knockoff on this because I really need to Oko the Zorak because it's really problematic for my Torn. And that is it. I will stay tuned for the battle. So here we got the team. He's got Volcanion. Scizor, Porygon, Salamence, Kecleon, and Zorak. Zorak is going to be a problem combined with the Salamence Scizor. 
Otherwise, I'm not too worried about his team. I got to keep in mind the Porygon is going to be a defensive threat. He could win defensively with that Porygon if I'm not too careful. But I also put Scald on my Politoed over the counter because counter is illegal with Encore with Politoed, so I was not able to do that. And uh, I can actually Scald it if it is getting Magic Bounce, and then I can Toxic it if it carries Water Absorb on the Trace. So. I decided to lead out with my Diancie just so if he leads Kecleon I can just switch out into my Chestnut after I do click protect because Kecleon does learn Iron Tail or whatever. So here I'm just going to go for the protect here on the Volcanion. I don't know if it's Zorark or not and if it is a Zorark then you know what if you Scarf HP Steel or whatever I can just switch out or Scarf Iron Tail it's whatever. So I'm going to protect and then I'm going to protect again because I can <laughs> just to get some scout going in case this is actually a Zorak as well in case it's insane and wants to switch into Zorak on a Diancie. And here I'm going to switch out and I'm going to go out into my Chestnut to deal with this Porygon a little bit better as he goes for Iron Tail. Now the thing is uh, when I went and looked at the Porygon I didn't see Trace so I was thinking I don't know what this is it could be download but I didn't see download I didn't see Trace so it has to be analytic either that or I was tripping and I didn't see anything so here I'm just gonna go for Spikes as he goes for Discharge and then an Iron Tail I believe and I thought it was Zora for a second but then I realized Zora does not get Discharge so my Chestnut is really really low I do the calc and it's actually just no attack with Ice Beam so if he had attack investment, my chestnut would have been blown away from the jump. But if he wasn't attack invested, then it's going to be a lot easier to take down. So like I said, the Porygon was a defensive um, win condition. And if it had more attack, then it would be a lot easier to take down. So here, I go out to Politoed. Um, I shouldn't have done that because we replayed this because we DC'd. And I didn't go out to Politoed, so I just take unnecessary damage on my Politoed for no reason. Um, I actually went out to Magnezone, Magneton. And I take <laughs> more damage than I should have uh, the last time, which is um, kind of lame because you'll see later of why this matters. So here I'm just going to Volt Switch and I'm going to Volt Switch out into my Goldilocks, um, expecting him to go for um, Discharge. And I'm just going to go for the Iron Head here. If I had Earthquake, I would go for Earthquake, but I don't have Earthquake. I don't know. Just because last time he brought in Volcanion, but uh, he does go out into his Volcanion here as I do go for the Iron Head and it is actually a Zorark. And with my spread, I actually had a 40% chance to knock out the Zorark right there, um, which is kind of lame, but you know, it's 40% is not 100, so he'll take those. So now I'm forced to go out to Torn. This play was really really hard on me I was thinking do I go out to Torn or do I go out to Diancie if I go out to Diancie and he goes for a steel move um, that's gonna put me on the back foot and I really don't want that to happen so I decide you know what let's just go out to Torn it's going to be better in the long run because even with mine uh, even if he goes for flamethrower I'll be able to take that anyway because he did bring it in on my Steelix and I don't want my Steelix to take damage or even get my item knocked off because I need this for the Salamence and the Salamence is pretty much the only thing that I'm really worried about um, after I did Iron Head this because I have a Magneza Magneton that deals with the Volcano and the Scizor and this also kind of deals with the Volcano, Dynasty deals with the Volcano, Polito deals with the Volcano. I have things on my team that really deal well with the Volcano. It's just the Salamence and the Pouring on at this point that I'm really worried about so I don't really I need to keep the Steelix healthy for that alone. So now I'm going to switch out into Diancy expecting the Sucker Punch as um, he does go for the Sucker Punch and here I'm just going to go for the Moon Blast to just knock it out. So down goes the Zorak, I'm up 6 to 5 pretty early in the game and I deal with the huge threat early on but I do lose my Assault Vest as a result which is you know definitely detrimental. So now he's going to go back out into this threat known as Porygon 2 with the analytic and I do confirm I was paying attention this time there was no ability that procced so it's definitely 100% a a uh, analytic Porygon. So he's going to go for the ice beam and I was hoping he'd go for discharge so I could set up my rocks but he actually just goes for the ice beam. Uh, analytic does not proc against Delic so that would be nice 
to have but now I'm going to just go out to Politoed as he goes for another Ice Beam and that's going to do negligible damage. I do have Scald in case he does get a freeze on me so that's fine. I mentioned in the beginning that uh, I can't have counter with Encore which is something that was kind of upset about but counter would have been so good to deal with the Scizor and the Salamence since I don't have, I can't have Ice Beam and Scald on Politoed with the moves that I'm running. So here I'm just going to Encore in case he wants to stay in and discharge but he switches out and I'm going to just Encore again because if he's a Sword Sense variant he should be fast and I want to just Encore him straight into that. Um, but he switches out into his Kecleon and I have 6 Encores left so I gotta be wary about that. And I'm going to switch out into my Chestnut here because I don't want my Dying Seed to take a Thunder Punch. Which is what I'm expecting him to do here as he does go for the Thunder Punch on my Chestnut. And the only thing that I'm really worried about from this Kecleon is Fire Punch. But I'm pretty sure um, he has Stealth Rock on this otherwise he doesn't have Stealth Rock on his team. And here I'm just going to Leech Seed here because if he goes for Shadow Sneak I'm not going to be able to hit him with a Drain Punch anyway. So I predict the Shadow Sneak right here and I'm going to go for the Leech Seed. As he does go for the Shadow Sneak, and based on that damage, he has max attack, max HP probably. Um, just because uh, he. I don't know why you would run speed on Kecleon, and that was max attack damage. So, with the Lead Seed, I am, I am able to heal up to a decent amount of HP. I still cannot take an Ice Beam from the Porygon. It does around 120, so I need to heal above 120. And here I'm going to switch out into my Magneton, expecting him to go out into his Scizor or his Volcanion to deal with my Chestnut um, to really just expose it. But I do double switch into my Magneton, expecting that. And now I'm in a really, really good position. He's floating on an air balloon, which is just funny because I guess he's just expecting my <laughs> Earthquake on my Magneton. But um, that's fine. And here I'm just going to Volt Switch. I don't think anything else on my team would carry a ground move because my Diancy Oko is the Volcano in any way with Diamond Storm um, after a little bit of prior damage. So I'm going to Volt Switch. Um, obviously, that I think that's a self S or something. I don't know. Um, maybe Magneton is just weak, but um, Kecleon is just very phenomenal special defense. So here I'm going to go for Diamond Storm as a result because in case he was really specially defensive, I just wanted to go for a Diamond Storm to be able to knock that out because it hits on the physical side and Kecleon's physical attack is, physical defense is not really that high. He goes out the Scizor, it's at 75%, that's really good for me. I'm going to switch out and I'm going to go out into my Politoed because I want to be able to, I, he cannot go for Sword Dance here if he is a Sword Dance variant because I still have my Magneton, he doesn't know if I'm, he probably does know if I'm Scarfed or not because I did uh. Uh, I did take the Ice Beam relatively well, so he should know that I'm Scarf. But right here, he gets a crit. Now this crit is really, really dumb because this puts a lot more pressure on my Politoed. Because Politoed is needed to take on the Volcanion, to take on the Scizor, and to take on the Porygon. So the only way that I'm beating the Porygon is with the Scald Burn, or getting it toxic with this, or my Chestnut. And Chestnut's already low as it is and this is now low because he got a crit with superpower and I'm very very upset about this but like what can you do it's a crit um Polytoed is pressured now so I gotta keep this relatively healthy I can't really switch it in that more that many more times because he did get this crit and the way that he's switching out his scissor it's showing me that he's not that fast or he doesn't carry u-turn so I'm going to double switch out into my Tornadus because I know that I'm going to be able to take a superpower really really well and get some regen action going on. So here I'm just going to go for the Grass Knot. I am modest and that's around 40% so I know that he's not max HP but he does have some HP investment I believe. And I calc it. I 100% live um, in HP um, electric if you wanted to go for it or steam eruption I think. I think Steam Eruption does more, but regardless, I am going to switch out into my Diancy here as he goes for an attack. I think I was just sacking off my Torn just to break that uh, hit because Steam Eruption would have probably knocked me out or Fire Blast too. 
So, I don't think that he was going to go for the steam eruption either way. Like, I would have lived a sludge wave easily, which is what a move he could have went for. So here I'm just going to go for the earth power, and then I'm going to switch out into my magneton here, because I don't believe there's a dimension in which he goes for superpower when his scissor is this low. He's either going to go for the bullet punch, or he's going to go for the roost or the defog. Well, he wouldn't go for defog there. He's either going to go for the roost or the bullet punch. So he's outside of range of my HP fire. So I'm just going to go for the volt switch. And I'm going to volt switch out into my only Pokemon that can take a superpower at this point, which is my Torn, because he crit my Politoed. I wouldn't went out to Politoed anyway, um, because I didn't want that thing to get too low. So now he's. He's in a bad position right now. He's at minus one attack, minus one defense, and he's facing down a Torn, which can easily knock out this Scizor. Now, Bullet Punch can knock me out, um, but if he Bullet Punches and I go back out into my Magaton, his Scizor is dead because then I just HP Fire and I knock it out. So I think it's a really bad play if he goes for the bullet punch because I can just knock out his scissor. So I'm thinking that he probably goes out into his um, Porygon here um, to take advantage of the fact that I could go out into my Magneton so that he can recover off um, some spikes damage that he's going to take. So here I'm going to go out into my Chestnut here to be able to take on the Porygon a lot better because Drain Punch is going to put me out of range of the next ice beam and he's going to take spikes damage so he'll he'll be forced to recover eventually and so that i can maybe get off a toxic on that and basically the only the only thing that i want this chest not to do at this point is to be able to poison the the porygon and after that i'm just i'm just fine so here i miss elite seed not only do i miss elite seed but he goes for defog and i just i'm just very upset that of this entire sequence of turns so not only did he go for bullet punch on my chestnut when I had a magneton in the back, um, at minus one there's no way that his superpower could knock out my magneton um, with a bullet punch because when I mentioned earlier the ice beam did more damage the, the second time because we recreated, 108 was the max roll that he could have gotten with superpower with no attack scissor which is what I'm expecting him to be because of the earth power damage that did nothing and then the superpower damage from the tornadoes also confirmed that but I didn't know at the time I didn't like confirm it at the time but the superpower damage on the torn confirmed that so if he went for bullet punch on my magneton or even superpower I would have been able to knock out his scissor so I was expecting the porygon and he didn't go out to porygon then he goes for defog after he's at minus defenses when I could have just drain punched but drain punch wouldn't have done too much and he has roost anyway but whatever but here I go for the lead seed and I miss and because I missed the lead seed it puts so much more pressure on my chestnut for no reason had I gone for the lead seed I would have been able to switch out into my torn and get some regen back and that would have been so helpful to deal with um, his salamence his uh this scissor right here because then I can take bullet punches a lot better and if I got the lead seed off he might have been forced to go for roost here because um, he would have been at uh, he would have been at earth power range if I got up spikes or stealth rock the next time so now chestnut is low lower than I wanted to the scissor um, is not lead seated so it takes less damage and I can't switch to torn here if I got the lead seed off I would have switched to torn here on this volcanion um, but here I'm just gonna go for the lead seed and I do get the volcanion seated but I don't really care if this is seated or not but at the same time it really does help me because Politoed at this point can take a fire blast plus HP electric so I'm fine with that so here I'm actually going to switch out into my Politoed here I could have switched out to Diancy to be fair because there's no way he goes for steam eruption but um, I don't know I don't want my Diancy to get burned and if he burns this it's really really bad but like what can you do like he dodged the <laughs> dodged the kill with Zoroark he missed the lead seed and he crit my Politoed already so like what what can I really do at this point if he burns me um, it's just divine intervention so with the lead seed he cannot knock me out I'm guaranteed to live in HP electric so here I'm actually just going to go for the Earthquake because Earthquake plus Leech Seed should be enough to knock out his um, Volcanion there. Um, keep in mind I am still a careful nature on my Politoed because I don't need Scald damage, I need the Scald burn. 
So here I'm just going to go for the Toxic on the Porygon and this is great, I get this thing whittled. So I don't really have a need for this Polytoad anymore, except for um, just Scalding the Scizor. He goes for Discharge and he gets a Para. And let's, let's talk about this Para now. The fact that he got this Para means that I cannot go for Earthquake the following turn to put pressure on this Porygon. If I put pressure on this Porygon, I'd be able to win basically just win with Diancy plus Magneton because the only way that uh the only way that he pressures by Diancy right now is with his Salamence and with his um Porygon and if I put pressure on the Porygon it cannot pressure it cannot beat this Politoed because then Politoed would be at a healthy amount of HP it'd be at around 50 HP and then I could uh still have the Steam Eruption switch in with this Politoed and I could sack another one of my Pokemon like Chestnut because I don't really need Chestnut anymore if this um, if this Politoed is not paralyzed. So he does paralyze me and I can't go for the Earthquake Encore combination in case he wants to go for the Recover, which is lame. And uh, I don't want to sack off my Politoed just yet. I'm going to go out into my Chestnut because if he wants to go for Recover, that's going to allow me to get up Spikes. Um, I don't really need Chestnut anymore. And with Leftovers, Ice Beam is not going to be enough to knock me out. So, he does go for the Discharge again, trying to knock on my Toad, and that's not going to happen. So, now I am going to just go for the Drain Punch instead of the Spike. In hindsight, if I did go for the Spike, I would have been able to knock out that Porygon with a Moonblast. So, the only way that he was going to beat my Diancy was with a Scarf Salamence. So, I should have taken that into account. And here I'm just going to go for the Drain Punch. He is r in range of Spikes, I think. I think he's at around 12%. And I'm out of range of Ice Beam, so I got to keep this Chestnut in mind of taking an Ice Beam. Um, I don't know. I think it's a roll of, for me to die. But anyways, I'm going to go out into my Politoed here and just sack it to the Volcanion because it's pretty much useless. It's paralyzed. There's really nothing I can do. If it wasn't paralyzed, I probably would have tried to drain punch with my uh, with my chestnut because I didn't really need chestnut at that point. I just needed one of Politoed or chestnut. So here he's gonna go out into his scissor. Just gonna go for the grass knot here as uh, he does switch it out. And now I'm just gonna go for the heat wave as he does go for the bullet punch and he sacks the scissor. And I'm really really happy about this because now Diancy can 100% win. So, I am very, very happy about this. Diancy is in the prime position to win. I do have superpower. He is not in superpower range, so I'm not going to go for it. Um, had I set out the spikes, he would have been in superpower range, and there was nothing that he could do with the Salamence to beat me. Um, so, setting on spikes might have been a bit better um, with the Chestnut, but I didn't think that far ahead with 100 second turns. Um, um, <laughs> limiting me. So here, I'm gonna go for Thunderbolt, and I want to just put pressure on this Porygon to where Diancy can just beat it. But he freezes me. And now, <coughs> what is this position? I'm in. I'm in a position that's really, really bad right now. Because if I stay in, and he stays in, that's great. Because then he's whittled even more, and then I can switch out into my Chestnut and just sack it off. So that uh, Diancy can come in on whatever else he wants to bring in. If I go into my Chestnut right now and he kills me, I don't know if I can actually go out into Diancy to knock out this Porygon. So I need one more turn of poison before I can comfortably bring in my Chestnut. Now, if he switches out to Salamence and I switch out to Chestnut, that's still fine because of I can just go for Toxic and I have Lead Seed. So even if he has Roost on his Salamence, I do have Protect to be able to beat that with Toxic and Lead Seed and stuff. Um, there's no way that Salamence can beat my Chestnut because if he has a Lumberry, then I can just burn the Lumberry with the Toxic and then if he has Aerialist, he kills me and then I can just kill his Salamence with Ice Fang and then I'll proceed to be able to just win the game with Diancy after that. 
So this this puts me in a really bad position because I don't know if he's gonna go into Salamence or stay in because if I get the 50-50 wrong I could just lose the game because I'm frozen solid so I just decided to stay in because I don't know if he's gonna want to just switch out and the thing that I'm fearing is a choice scarf Salamence anyway and if he's if he's DD then he's DD but he switches out to Salamence and I stay frozen I went for the um, volt switch there so that I could volt switch out into my chestnut and just sack it but that didn't happen and he's able to go for a dragon dance and he's able to set up on my magneton that was frozen just because he got a 10% freeze after the lead seed miss after the discharge pair after the crit on the polytoad he gets a freeze so he's able to knock out my torn I could have switched out to dying and then switched back out to torn but Dian is a win con and I don't know like if he was gonna if he had like rock slide he could have went for rock slide there I didn't want to go do Diancy there and here he's gonna go for the earthquake I do have the Shuka I can live a plus two earthquake but he gets a crit so Ice Fang would have been able to Oko the Salamence but he gets a crit and he's able to knock me out right there so now I just get swept by this Salamence because he crit my Steelix and he froze my magneton. <sighs> what a way to end off the GBA season. <laughs> what a way to end off the GBA season. So like I said, even if he had a Lumberry, I had Toxic. I would be able to Toxic twice. And then sack off my guy because then he wouldn't be Toxic, but he wouldn't have a Yachu Berry. So that Steelix would be able to 95% kill. The Salamence. If I didn't get the 95, then I guess I guess this game just wasn't for me. But uh, I still have the Torn too, so I could I could have went out to Torn. But if I went out to Torn on the Porygon and Ice Beamed, I might have just lost to a Scarf Salamence anyway, because he could just Earthquake, and I don't know. Anyways, that is that is the game we play. GG to Fizz. I felt like I outplayed him for the 90% of the game, but that's what happens. Um, it's going to be Fizz versus Cooper, Envy versus Sceptile MC. Hope you guys enjoyed. Leave a like. Very depressing. I'm going to take a break from um, competitive tournament games.